Okay, so you first want to start off by duplicating this layer. And then after duplicating it, you want to go into your rectangle tool here. So if you click on this, it's not already selected as rectangle. You can click on a rectangle up at the top there and deselect what's already highlighted here by clicking in the gray area and then going into uh, selecting my rectangle. And I pretty much pick the entire <clears throat> image like that. And after that's done, you come over to the left side, take this gradient tool selection, and for simplicity, I just start at the center of the window, come straight out, let go, and I switch this in this case to uh, radial gradient and then drag well excuse me on this end of it I want to make this opacity of zero so you click on this end over here and then up in your opacity over here on the right hand side you'll drag that all the way down to zero in this case now you can see the radial gradient taking place here and I want to slip this in to here where that second background layer is and at this point it's now a mask of that second background layer and you can start making whatever kind of adjustments you want in this case let's say uh, to make it something obvious I'm going to kick the saturation all the way up now it's up in this area it's the way I've just got it set up in affinity photo all those different um, filters are going to appear at the top so you drag that in and make that a child of that mask and now you can see if you drag that saturation up and down it will affect that area where the graduation mask is applied. Um, you can do that with uh, multiple filters as well. I can come in here and say um, brightness and contrast, for instance. And when I turn this brightness all the way down, you'll see it affecting the entire image. But again, if you just slide that down into here, now it's only affecting that particular area. I can make that as light or dark as I want. And it's covering the same area as the vibrance filter below it. Now, if I want to change the position on the screen of where this is being masked, I select the mask itself over here, highlight that, and pick on this little guy right here. I can drag that anywhere I want around the screen. And you'll see that it does, in fact, move the entire radial gradient. All right. Same thing with uh, whatever kind of adjustment you might want to make to it. You might want to change the size of it, narrow it in a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And by the way, it doesn't have to be either horizontal or vertical selections on this. You can kind of go off on an angle. In fact, I think, if I remember right, yeah, if you hold the shift key down, it will lock it into 45 degree increments. If you want to do like a linear gradient, you can do that. So at any rate, that's pretty much that, you know, and again, whatever kind of filters you want to add to it, just come up and add another one if you like. Curves, for instance, let's just drag that so it's really easy to see. I'll drag that all the way down and bring that in here. So now <clears throat> the mask is affecting that curve adjustment. And you can go like this to see it real easily. Um, you can do that with sharpening a certain portion of the image, however you might want to do it. Anyway, that's it.